Hi, I'm Alan Tatro with Global Sugar Art, and today I'd like to show you how to use a very basic tool called a Garrett Frill Cutter. A Garrett Frill Cutter is used to make the ruffles that you see on the side of this cake and on the bottom. It's an old, old tradition. It, uh, the Garrett Frill Cutters have been around for a very long time, and probably 20 years ago, this type of ribbon border or frill border was very, very popular. And it's actually gaining popularity again. As always, old things sort of recycle and become popular again. A lot of people don't know how to use this cutter, so I thought I'd show you today. This cake was done. The, uh, the Garrett frill cutter was used to create the ruffle on the bottom and for the drapes along the side. And then I used one of the Global Sugar Art molds uh, to uh, add a little bit of detail. So I'll be showing you that as well. This is one of the Garrett frill cutters. This one happens to be made by PME, but there are several different brands that make them. Basically, it's a round cutter that's scalloped, and then there are interchangeable centers. So if you want a very, very wide ruffle, you would use the smallest center, and that would give you a nice wide ruffle. If you want a medium-sized one, or in my case today, I'm going to use uh, the narrowest ruffle. So you just snap those two pieces together and you're ready to go. Now for the paste on this, I wouldn't use fondant. You can use fondant, but it's a little harder to work with and it stretches. And as you're trying to put it on the side of the cake, it's very likely to stretch on you and become uneven. So I, I would recommend using a 50-50 mix of half gum paste and half uh, rolled fondant icing. And that's what I've prepared today. I'm using a little bit of cornstarch on a board. And I'm just going to roll this out. You can roll it out completely by hand or you can use one of the pasta machines, which I really like using because it always gives you a very even piece of paste. I'm just going to run this through to about a number five. And I usually go up two at a time for something like this. So I started on number one. I'm going to number three. And I'll finish right at number five. These are great for making flowers and all kinds of things when you have to roll out a lot of paste. OK, I'm going to put a little bit of cornstarch on both sides of this so that it feels very dry to me. And then I'm just going to cut a couple pieces. Just lay that down and go in a circular motion so that it cuts very free. And then flip it out. You're, you're not going to use the center. You're going to use this part right here. That, that is the frill that you're going to use. So I'll put one there and we'll cut a second one out. And there is the second one. Okay, put that aside. And now we're going to ruffle this. <clears throat> I'm going to cut it so that it's one length. I don't need it in a circle. So I'm going to start by cutting it. I'm using the soft side of a cell pad. There are two sides. This is the firmer side and this is the soft side. So you want to make sure that you're using the soft side. And I'm going to lightly dust the top of this with a little bit of cornstarch so that it doesn't stick. I'm going to use the very smallest cell pin, not the cell stick, which is the cocktail stick. This is the smallest cell pin. You can use uh, the handle of a paintbrush if it's smooth and rounded. For really small ones, you actually can use like a cocktail toothpick. Now, if you're, if you're using all fondant, you're going to want to take the end of your uh, uh, cell stick or, or toothpick, and you're going to want to roll back and forth. Now, remember, to get a ruffle, the inside part can't be stretched. You're only going to stretch the outside part, and that's what's going to make the ruffle. If you're using a 50-50 mix, you don't have to roll back and forth. As long as I put a little cornstarch on there, I can just rub this back and forth, and I can start developing a really nice ruffle. And I'm sort of straightening this out as I go. Remember, only do the end of it. You don't want to thin this top part, or then you're just going to have a long, thin piece of paste, and, and it won't have any ruffles in it.
These are great on wedding cakes, bridal showers, little girls' birthdays, christenings, baptisms. Um, there's, there's a lot of uses for these. And you can do them in all different colors. Okay, so we have one piece done. And now I want to show you how to attach it to a cake. I've covered this cake with gum paste, ahead of, or excuse me, with fondant ahead of time. And I've divided it into six equal segments. So I marked six little dots here. And then I went about two inches down and I marked a little dot. So that will be the bottom of my ruffle and this will be the ends of my ruffle. Let me move this board out of the way. I'm going to then take a water pen and I'm going to just put a little bit of water and just wet that fondant. And try to do this. I'm going to just lay that right on the cake and then just pinch it off where you want it to end. If you want to lift up that ruffle a little bit, just use your pin and go right in and lift it up. And that's all there is to it. That's how, that's how easy it is to add a ruffle to a cake. I want to do this last piece and just show you how we add it to the bottom. Again, don't forget to cover it with a little bit of cornstarch. That makes a big difference because it allows the, the pin to move back and forth without sticking to it. Again, this is a mixture of half gum paste and half fondant. And I'm using, this is satin ice fondant. Depending on the rolled icing that you use, for instance, if you were to use fonderific or choco pan, you may have to use more paste um, because they can be a little softer or they may have a little more oil in them um, so you'll have a different effect. You'll have to experiment with the fondant that, with the brand that you're using. Okay, for the bottom, same thing. I'm going to, I'm going to wet right along the bottom border here. And I'm just going to lay that in. And then I'm going to use my pin just to push down on the back where it was wet so it will adhere to the, uh, to the board, to the fondant. And then I created a pearl border and I just uh, wet, the, wet the, um, the top of the ribbon and I just laid the pearls on there and they glued right in place. Now, to make the little rose border, I used the, uh, the GSA. This is the Global Sugar Art um, Rose Border Mold. Take a little piece of half and half 50-50 fondant and gum paste. Roll it into a sausage. Put a little bit of shortening on your fingers. Whenever you're working with molds, this helps the fondant won't, or the gum paste won't stick to your fingers. And just push this back and forth so you're working it into the mold. And then push down really firm. You have to really push it in there to make sure all the cavities are filled and you get a nice molding of the product. You can add a little bit of shortening to a, a palette knife. This is just an artist palette knife. Start in the middle and cut toward the end. If you start on the end and you go this way, you're liable to lift up the whole molded piece right out of the mold. So I will start from the middle and just cut it flush. And that's all there is to it. Now I'll pop this in the freezer and give it about five minutes and then it will unmold very easily. I have one that I just finished and I unmolded. And I'm gonna color this. I'm going to start with, uh, this is a little pink luster dust, and I'm just going to do the roses. Of course, you can choose whatever color you're using on your cake. And then I'm going to do a little bit of green. Uh, this is also a luster dust.
Okay. I'm going to position this so that the roses are hanging down. So it's important that I dust the top right here. Otherwise, when you're looking down at the cake, you'll see the white paste. Okay. So that's all done. Now, in order to glue this to the ribbon that I did, again, just use a water brush and add a little bit of water. And just lay that on there. Oops. And just lightly press it. It's not wanting to stick today. There we go. And we're going to snap it off right there, put the rose at the top. Well. Okay. And that's all there is to it to adding a rose border on top of the ruffle. You also can use two layers of ruffle or three. I mean, I've seen a lot of cakes where they'll do one deep ruffle and then add a second one. So you actually could start with a really wide ruffle, make a nice wide ruffle, and then cut a very narrow ruffle like the one I just did and overlay that one on top. You can add a string of pearls on there. You can add just a very thin rope that you've rolled out by hand. Um, there's all kinds of things. You actually can use a crimper and do a crimp border on the inside of that. There's lots of different ways to finish the ruffle, but they really do make a very nice um, uh, attraction on, on a cake. Uh, and like I said earlier, they're great for weddings, anniversaries, engagements, baby showers, um, christenings. There's a lot of uses for the ruffle. Thanks for watching. You can buy the Garrett Phil colors uh, at our website at globalsugarart.com. And again, thank you for watching.